Malola Blissoy for Moa Malelangi Emamala, and welcome to Pasifika Wire. We have a very special guest here with us today. And when I think of this guest, I think of this quote Oleala ile pule ole tautua, the pathway to leadership is service. And indeed, uh, this uh, Pasifika strong Samoan woman has uh, given service. And just let me read out a few uh, of um, the wonderful, amazing work that Councillor Josephine Bartley has done. She's a solicitor. She's senior advisor, Consumer Issues Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. Was the Pacific Community Engagement with New Zealand Red Cross. Um, she was in the Manukau, uh, excuse me, the Maunga Kia Kia Tamaki Local Board in 2010, re-elected in 2013 and 2016 was the board chair and made history in 2018, became the first, excuse me, became the first Pacific woman elected to Auckland City Council. And that's just a few things that she has done. And as we uh, approach the local body elections this year, we're very fortunate to speak with uh, the Maunga Kia Kia Tamaki local uh, city councillor who joins us. Talafa lover Josephine, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, thank you, Gladys, for this opportunity. Thank you for having me on the podcast. And uh, yeah, very humbling to hear my introduction. Thank you. And a well, deserved introduction and you know we're halfway through the year 2022 uh, how are you how's uh, health wise covid wise family how are you doing um, well we're at the start of a campaign um so it's a, it's what do you call it rearing up revving up revving up yeah so i'm 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 good i'm actually a little grumpy this morning <laughs> I had uh, media calls already and it's just uh, unnecessary really, just trying to create unnecessary noise. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm good. I've got my family, my friends. And I always find campaigns hard because my mum was always the centre of our campaign. So yeah, this is good to do this today. And Councillor, you, you've talked about, you know, it's revving up uh, into the campaign uh, part of the elections and with that, of course, media interest and so forth. But for you, the journey that started of you going down this pathway of leadership and service, can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I... Um... Yeah, I, I started ages ago, 2008, no, 2006, I tried to go for nomination for the Tamaki Community Board. All right. But at that time, I think there was some issues. Oh, you know, we all know the issues in the media regarding um, title. And people said to me that um, they weren't really keen on another Samoan because they were, they didn't want any more scandal. So I wasn't successful getting selected back then to stand for the community board. Um, and then 2008, I got the chance to stand for parliament in Tamaki for Labour. But uh, those things, that's the political story. But I've always, I've always, that's why I took law was because I just wanted to um, help really. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty much my whole... DNA is about service and doing the public roles is just another way to serve you yeah. and and serve you have and you know in terms of public service can you talk to us about why is it important you know the role that the city council plays I, I think because uh, everyone seems to think MPs, MPs, mm. and when they see you on a billboard, they think MPs, mm. and uh, they don't uh, see that actually council has a bigger role to play in your daily life. Um, 
And, and I think that's why we have low turnouts when we have council elections, because people, one, probably didn't know the candidates before, uh, because the candidates were not diverse before, didn't reflect the communities. And so, of course, people disengaged and people didn't understand, um, yeah, that council has a hand in everything from the park that you walk through to your library, to the hall that you hire for your 21st and your family functions, to um, the roadblocks, uh, the water coming in your pipes, and then your community groups. Yeah, council has a big, 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 big role in our daily lives. And councillor, over you know the long period that you've been in public service, are you starting to see those changes in terms of diversity and inclusion? Are you starting to see it more? I think, um, well, to be honest, the the change comes when you have different voices around the table of different backgrounds, mm. and it's only recently that that change in decision makers has happened. So the change is happening, but it's happening slowly, but you can see it happening. Um, yeah, so I think it, it is happening, but it is very slow. I see council as a ship and trying to turn that ship around from hundreds of years of it being business as usual and doing what it does is, uh, is a very hard task, yeah. Councillor, you spoke about, you know, where you're in our lives every day, the decisions that you make or that we all make together, it affects us on a daily uh, basis. And can I um, just observe, you're at, every time I see you're at meetings, it doesn't matter how big or how small you're there, you're making a difference. So for you during this global pandemic that we're currently finding ourselves in, highlights and challenges, what are your constituents or what, what are you, the community saying to you on the ground? What are the issues that impact them? The issues, um, you know, when we went into lockdown, I would say that was my busiest time as a counsellor because I was getting messages on Facebook. Facebook Messenger is how people contact me um and it was straight away about food people asking look i've been caught out uh, i haven't got my benefit through yet and i need to get food for me and my baby that was the first query i got on messenger uh, so food was number one issue for my constituents but then also why as we saw with the rest of um, our communities in auckland and then employment was the other issue a lot of uh, people were messaging me that their bosses were staying home in the lockdowns, but sending them into the workplace, even though other workmates have had COVID or have COVID. Mm. And so they were wanting to know what were their rights. So you, you look at these things and you go, well, technically that may not be uh, something that I can get the city council involved in, but as a councillor, I see your role as looking after your area, which is of, you know, whatever issues constituents come to you with. So those were our biggest issues was food and exploitation in the workplace. Yeah, those were the biggest issues. And unfortunately, would that impact a lot on our Pacifica and Māori communities? Did you see a lot more of that affecting our yeah. communities? Yeah. Definitely, I saw that, definitely. Um, Aside from getting people to go and get, you know, promoting and encouraging people to go get vaccinated for their own well-being, like that was a big issue. But then in, in Maunga Kiki Tamaki, we had we had good rates of vaccination, um, but it was just, uh, you know, uh, our South Side uh, families that needed extra support. So. Uh, what I was looking at was, well, you know, like uh, so other areas of Auckland, like Orake, posting how proud and happy they were that, you know, they had high vaccination rates. And I was like, you can't celebrate that because you don't live in a vacuum. 
if you you you're living in Mission Bay, you're going to get on the same bus as someone from, you know, my ward or from South Auckland. You're, you're going to mix everywhere, so you can't celebrate one area getting high vax rates because you need the whole all of us to have high vax rates to be safe. So there was that issue, but yeah, uh, for Māori bus speaker, I used it was food. It was worry and concern and. Uh, yeah, a lot of fear about the vaccination and then exploitation in the workplace. And you were on the ground, um, you played a huge role on the local front um, and on the um, national front of getting that message out to our people. And unfortunately, some people took that too far, didn't they? And unfortunately, is that one of the challenges that you face in the public eye is that people want a lot from you and, and sometimes go overboard? Um, I, do, I did have that um, to my face. Uh, normally it's online uh, and, you know, a lot of people tell you, oh, just don't read it. Don't, you know, when something happens, they straight away, you know, Councillor Richard Hill, straight away he's onto me, don't read anything. And you try and not read it, but then you kind of, kind of want to know, well, what are they saying? Uh, but now I'm at a stage where I just, I don't reply and I don't read it. But then people screenshot things and send it to you because they're concerned, mm -hmm. but they don't realise they're just adding to it. Yep. But it's scary when, it, when they confront you to your face in public, especially when I'm around my car, because that's how they can identify me. And I always worry about that because I have my nieces and my nephews in the car with me. And I just don't want them to come across that kind of horrible, nasty behavior because I don't want them to be tainted because that's only a few people that act like that. It's not everybody. And like you said, that's mm, the tough side of it. But for, for you, the work that you're doing in Glen Innes, we often hear about, okay, South Auckland, West Auckland, but Glen Innes, there's a thriving community there. And um, it, it's good to see, are, are you seeing that there's more development, there's more resources going into Glen Innes? There's more, there's definitely more development. And because of that development, we're getting more resources and investment, which is, is really good because... Um, this area goes back to the 1940s, 50s, I think, when the infrastructure was put in, and it's still the same infrastructure, still the same railway houses along Tripoli Road, um, and the same water pipes, some places no water pipes. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's good to have this infrastructure. With the development, uh, you know, totally understand we have a housing shortage. People need homes. But with the new people moving in, you have to have opportunities for social cohesion. Because, you you know, you've got new communities moving into an existing community and they need, they need to mix. They need to understand each other's differences. Yeah. In terms of your campaign, what... Uh... What's the messages that you're getting out to the people on the ground? What are you saying to them about? What will you be campaigning on? What are the projects that are dear to your heart and the, and the work that you're continuing to do? Uh, I am campaigning on... Uh, well, my campaigns have always been a, a strong local voice for communities. Uh, that continues. I still believe in communities and want to be that voice for our diverse communities in Maungakiki Tamaki, but also prompting that there is change coming. You know, we have growth and with growth comes change. Um, and we need to be ready for that change. And the change needs to take into account the realities of people in our area. So um, I'm not someone that is against change. I, I think we need it but I think we need to bring our communities along with us. And that's where we've stumbled. Uh, and I'm also uh, campaigning on the changes that we need to make in order to address climate action or climate change. 
which is going to be very, very hard. It's not a popular issue in Mōngan Kikitamaki. Right. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm campaigning on. Because I see where we need to get to as a city, but trying to get us there is, is really unpopular and hard. So I have a very good chance of not winning uh, because most people prefer status quo and don't want change. And I, I, I guess in terms of, you know, the, the, being the first Pacific uh, woman to be a city councillor, um, is it time we start thinking for a specific mayor of the super city? Are we heading to that? Is that something that you would aspire to? Um, is, 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 do you see that that's somewhere that you could possibly go? Um, I, I would, yeah, I'd, I'd be honored to, to have that position. Um, if people wanted me there, uh, and some journalists were putting me in a list of top 10 for Mayor of Auckland, I was just blown away by making that list, being the only woman on that list. It was Metro Magazine's list. Right. To me, I was just, yeah, I was blown away by that. But to even fathom that our city would support a Pacifica mayor is just, yeah, uh, kind of unbelievable given the racism that both Efeso and I have experienced. So I hope people come out in force in the elections in October if they want to see a Pacifica mayor and to support the only option for one, which is Efeso. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's pretty pretty exciting times, but also knowing what we face, and it took till twenty eighteen to get a brown woman sitting around the table, mm. the governing body of Auckland. I'm just um, I'm just yeah, I'm not jumping up and down. I'm just like cautious. Yeah, it's taken too long, hasn't it? It's been very long. And then you look at our CCOs, our controlled council controlled organizations, which are pretty much the implementation arm of council. Right. Uh, and you look at, at the boards. So I'm on the appointments committee trying to change the criteria of our board directors so that we can get more diversity there. And it was only last year that we got our first bus fika board director on our CCOs. So we got a long way to go. A yeah. long way to go. Yeah. As a leader, what's your advice to our Pacific people who are thinking a career in local body public service? What would you say to them? I will say to them, uh, it is not easy. Um, but if you believe in what you're doing and you believe in yourself and you believe in making a difference, that you can make a difference for your communities, then do it and keep going. Be persistent. I've been in local government now since 2010 on the local board and a councillor since 2018. Uh, but it took me 12 years to become a city councillor, which is something I've always wanted to do. I, I um, So you... You, you, you look at what you need to do and then you do it. And really, uh, people recognize service. Um, they recognize if you have a track record and if you do the work, no matter how small or how big the issue is. You know, my uncle, he's here from Samoa getting treatment. And he said to me, he saw me on the news when uh, I was being interviewed about the shootings in Pamua. And he said to me, you're doing what I do. You're the pulenu'u of your village. And everybody's problem is your problem. But he also said to me, you're too young to take all that on. You should be <laughs> out there traveling, enjoying your life. So that's, that's what you've got to look at as well, is you may come into 
you may stand and put yourself forward because you've got a particular issue, but actually people see you as someone who can help them and they will come to you with everything, any little thing, and they do it all hours of the day, not just nine to five. So you've got to think of that impact on yourself and your families. Uh, I don't know about these other counsellors and, you know, these other elected reps that have young children. Very, must be very hard to balance everything. I have, um, I have this. I have this in my life that I have responsibility <laughs> for. So, yes. That's your life there. What's uh, he or she? Who? So this is my balance. Yeah, need some balance. You need some balance. Need, need some balance, but it is a hard life. Public service is a hard life. And with that, the message must be, we have to vote once we get those papers. And I think the registration papers have been you know, posted out. Um, the deadlines are coming around we need to get out and vote, don't we? Yeah, you do, you know, even trying to, because I go to the secondary schools and I talk to them about the importance of voting and how people fought so hard because they didn't have the vote. And here we are, we don't even use that power. But it is power, you know, good people have lost out getting elected from like 10 votes. And if 10 people voted, they would have had a really good person representing them. Yeah. So it's very, very important. If you you want to see things that, 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 that benefit your community, you know, like a lot of people talk about the inequities that exist. Why are things flashing on that side of Auckland than they are on this side of Auckland? Uh, and you, you need to vote. You need to get your good, strong candidate, you know, candidates over the line so they can fight for those inequities to be addressed. Thanks for listening. Visit our website at www.pacificawire.com. We welcome you to like us on Facebook, LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can listen to the full podcast on Spotify. But for today, my ear manuia.